Today we're going to learn about factoring quadratic expressions. Of course, a quadratic is a uh, expression that where it, it, one variable is raised to the power of two, so x squared. Um, let's go ahead and see what we're going to need to do to factor this guy. First of all, before I get started, let's talk about factors. Um, if I have the number 24, and I want to talk about its factors. Uh, what I do is I make a tree. Uh, I divide 24 by 2 and uh, I get 12 and these are two factors of 24. If I multiply 2 times 12 I get 24. Uh, if I divide the 12 by 2 I then get 6 and if I divide the 6 by 2 I get 3. And these guys at the very bottom of the tree uh, are known as prime factors. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 gets me 24. But I also have all kinds of other factors here. Um, I could put these together in a, in a number of different ways. I could make it 4 times 6, that's 24. Or I could do 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8 times 3, that's 24. So 8 times 3, that, those are factors of 24. Factors in general are things that if you multiply them together, um, you get a product like 24. So let's take a look and see how, how we can take this product, x squared plus 14x minus 72, and find its factors. In order to factor this quadratic expression, I'm going to introduce you to a concept I call the x factor. Actually, a student told me that, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. So x squared plus 14x minus 72. We'll take the 14, we'll put it down here in the bottom of the x. We'll take the negative 72, and we'll put that in the top part of the x. And then what we do is we make a list. That's a 7. We'll make a list of all the factors uh, factor pairs of 72. So that includes 1 comma 72. I always start with 1 in the number. Then uh, 72 can be divided by 2 and if I do I get 36. Uh, 72 can be divided by 3. That gets me 3 times 24. And 72 can even be divided by 4. That gets me 18. That's a little bit less known of a combination. Uh, and then if I divide by 6 I get 12 and 72 divided by 8 gets me 9. So these are all the factor pairs of 72 and I could have made a tree like I did earlier in order to find these pairs. Now my goal is is to find a number that goes here and another number that goes here and the two numbers should add up to this guy down here the 14 in other words the 14 is the sum of the two numbers and these two numbers should multiply together to get me negative 72 in order in other words the negative 72 is the product of the two numbers and if I can find two numbers that meet these criteria then I'll be able to have my factors so uh, it turns out that 4 and 18 seem to work pretty well um, I can put 4 here and 18 here the only problem is is that 18 and 4 don't really add up to 14. Um, I have to make it a uh, n let's make it a negative 4 and negative 4 plus 18 gets me 14 negative 4 times 18 gets me negative 72. This means that my factors will be x minus 4 times x plus 18. Now, that's the answer that I'm looking for, so I'm going to go ahead and box it. The goal was here to factor the quadratic expression, and that's exactly what I did. I have, this is a factor, x minus 4, this is a factor, x plus 18, these are my two factors, and when multiplied together, I get this product, x squared plus 14x minus 72. Now, um, you can prove it. You don't have to take my word for it. If you foil these together, you'll see you get x squared plus 14x minus 72. Let's try factoring another quadratic expression. This time it's a little more advanced. We're still going to use the x factor method, but this time we've got a number out in front of the x squared. 
So instead of, uh, we'll, we'll take the middle number and we'll put it down below here, negative 13, just like we did in the first example. Um, but instead of taking the last number, negative 10, and putting it here on top, we'll multiply the 3 times the negative 10, and that gets us negative 30. That's the number that we'll have to make our list of factor pairs for. So I'm going to. So pairs of factors for 30 include 1 and 30, of course and 2 and 15 and 3 and 10 and 5 and 6. Now, uh, it, people who are just beginning at learning to factor, they will be a little confused about whether to use 2 and 15 or 3 and 10. It looks like both are, valuable, are, are, are viable options here. However, only one of them works to, to make uh, uh, the two numbers into a sum here and a product here. So uh, if I try 3 and 10 and I put 3 here and 10 here, I'd have to make them both negative in order to add up to negative 13. But when I multiply them together, I'd have positive 30, so that's no good. So instead, I'm going to use 2 and I'm going to use 15. And so if I make the 15 negative, and I add negative 15 plus 2, I get negative 13. And then negative 15 times 2 gets me negative 30. Now, because of this 3 out in front of the x squared, I'm going to have to do something slightly different than in the previous x factor example. Here I'm going to uh, divide the 2 by 3, and I'll also divide the negative 15 by 3. So I take the number that's in, out in front of the x squared, and I divide both sides by 3. The next thing I have to do is I have to reduce, if possible, so I'm going to put a big R here. Fortunately, 2 over 3 does not need to be reduced. It, it's, it's already fully reduced. But negative 15 over 3 does need to be reduced. So this will turn into negative 5 over 1. Now, this is it. This is enough to for me to figure out what my factors are. The way I make my factors is I'll write it out like this. It's going to be 3x plus 2 times x minus 5. And that's my answer. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, where? how did he get these things from this here? And I'm going to show you. So let's see if you can follow along. The 3 down here in the bottom of the fraction goes in front of the x, and then we add the 2 to the 3x, like such. And the, and the same thing over here. The bottom number goes in front of the x, which if we have 1 in front of the x, it's the same as having no number at all. And then we add the top number, in this case negative 5, to the 1x, and that gets us x minus 5. So in the end, that's how we get our factors. So we can go ahead and box this and say that is our answer. And again, in case you're not believing that this works, these two should multiply together as factors. This is a factor, 3x plus 2. This is a factor, x minus 5, for you to get the product 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. If you don't believe me, foil the two together, and you should see you get this as a product. I'm going to go ahead and box my answer. I want you to notice that when we're asked to factor a quadratic expression like this, our answer is just two factors. In a moment, I'm going to discuss what it means to solve a quadratic equation. We'll do similar steps, except in the end, we have to do a little something extra. In our first example, you'll recall that we factored a quadratic expression, x squared plus 14x minus 72. And the factors turned out to be x minus 4 times x plus 18. Now we're going to solve a, the quadratic equation using the zero product property. So let's say that our expression was equal to zero. If that's the case, then when we go and we factor our expression, it's still equal to zero. Now, it turns out that there's this handy dandy little property called the zero product property. And what it says is that if I have a times b 
and that equals zero. Well, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. Now, we're going to use this property in order to solve this quadratic equation because here I have something times something and it equals zero. Just like here, something times something equals zero. So if this is a x minus 4 uh, and this is b x plus 18 then and they multiply together and get to be 0 then either x minus 4 is 0 or x plus 18 is 0 so I'm gonna go ahead and set x minus 4 equal to 0 and solve for x if I add 4 to both sides I get x equals 4 and then uh, if x plus 18 equals 0 I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides and when I do I get x equals negative 18. Now uh, I have two possible solutions and one of them is 4 x equals 4 and one of them is negative 18. Now this means that x could be 4 or negative 18. This is not an ordered pair, this is not a coordinate, it is simply two possible solutions for x. And you could prove quite easily that these are valid solutions by taking the 4 and plugging it here and here and then doing the math you would see that this adds up to 0. Again if you took negative 18 and you plugged it in here and here if you did the math you would see this equals 0. And I recommend that you do. Don't take my word for it that this works. Plug in the 4 here and here and see if the whole thing actually equals 0. If it does, we have a great new technique for solving quadratic equations. So, one more time, just for good measure, uh, we're going to try to solve a quadratic equation using the zero product property. We'll take the quadratic expression that we factored earlier, set it equal to zero, and then we'll take the factors and set them equal to zero, and then we'll use the zero product property that says if 3x plus 2 times x minus 5 equals zero, then uh, either 3x plus 2 equals zero or x minus 5 equals zero. So if we do this, 3x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 2 thirds, and over here x equals 5. Again, we have two solutions, x equals negative 2 thirds, and comma 5, and those are our two solutions to this quadratic equation. And again, if you took the negative two-thirds and you plugged it in here and here, this whole thing should equal zero. And if you took the five and plugged it in there and there, this whole thing should be equal to zero. So it's easy enough for you to, to check and see whether or not your solutions are valid.